Now, Peter is a veteran of restoring cars. It appears that he's rebuilt this engine. Now, I've tried turning the flywheel, and that is moving quite nicely. But what I want to check on is to see if there's enough compression in the cylinders. We're looking for something like about nine and a half, ten bars of pressure, but nice and evenly across. This compression test gauge screws in where the spark plugs were. So now here comes the dangerous bit. Put that onto an earth there. And we'll switch on. You can see the gauge going up. So 11 bar. That's pretty good. OK, number two. So, looks like good news on the engine front. Now the car is back from the strippers, it's possible to see all the bumps, dents and half-finished repairs. Bit of nasty slicing away from where the wing was here. Overall, on this car, there are tons of little body jobs that all need to be addressed. But one of the major ones is this sill area here. Somebody has cut through this entire sill, which is rather like cutting through the bone in an arm and then putting the skin back on. There's no strength in there whatsoever. So if somebody ran into the side of this car, bang, it's just going to fold in. Well, I'm going to take off this outer sill here to make that one continuous piece and put all of the strength back into this side of the car. This is a really tedious job, but what I have here is a special drill which is made for drilling out spot welds. Notice it's very flat. This just drills out the little bit of fused metal. Got all that loose now. There's only about one, two, three, four, five, should, should we call it 60 or 70 to go? Having now finished that tricky sill, Fuzz can at last move on to another whole load of tedious welding. At the moment, everything is clamped up and just tacked in place. It's a bit like sewing together clothes. There are a couple of welds here and there holding things in place just to make sure we've got it right. With this, get it wrong here, it's wrong there, it's wrong there, and then it's wrong back there again. Try and put the bonnet on, it doesn't fit in the hole. One of the fiddliest jobs on a classic car is fitting these little bits of chrome trim around the windscreen rubbers. There's a little lip that it's got to go in, and it has to hook underneath that. And that's all that retains this little chrome embellishment. It's not an easy job at all. It really makes your fingers ache. But I can't wait to see Peter's face at the NEC. That will make it all worthwhile. This dashboard here, look, the foam is just degraded. It's that little crease just here. So I'm going to make a small cut under there. Yeah. To push it out. Just nice sharp blade. Just give it a cut only what you need to, just to allow you enough room to get in. There you go. See that? Oh, yeah, you can. So that's kind of pushing it back. Yeah, so heat it up. Slowly massage it. So you're reforming the piece yes. of vinyl on the top? That's it, yeah. So what's going to fill the gap underneath that? If it's got any movement, what we can do is we could infill it with a bit of neoprene. I've always replaced dashboards when they've got that same sort of vinyl foam sagging thing going on. Never thought about cutting it open and trying to reform the plastic. It's a pretty gutsy way to go, though, isn't it? Uh, if you go too far, you've damaged it. 